everyone, my name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and at the end, if you enjoyed it, give the video a thumbs up. So this was like my first full week off of work, Monday through Friday. So I got a buttload of reading done. Like, I'm super proud of myself. I, I mean, like, I finished all of these books, but I also, like, literally have two chapters left on another book, but I stopped myself from finishing it because I was like, I don't think I have enough time in a wrap-up video <laughs> to review all of these books already. So we're going to pause you so that we can move that book to next week. <laughs> So in total, I managed to start and finish a total of seven books and then read like an eighth book, like 99% of it. So I am hecka proud of myself. One of the books that I did read this week was The Gilded Voles by Roshani Chotsky, or is it Roshani Chotsky? I'm not going to review it in this video. I'm going to do a whole separate video because I had a lot of different thoughts on it, as well as like it's a pretty relatively big release coming up. So I wanted to do like just a separate video. Plus I got an arc of it, which was very nicely authored, so I, or publisher. So I want to like spotlight it a little bit. So that will be coming probably next week. I also managed to read Fox by Nadine Brands this week. Brands? Brandes? I don't know. However, I was like super sick last weekend when I did read this. Like felt like I was dying of the plague, which was ironic because there's a plague in this book. But I definitely feel like it did affect my overall memory of the book because I kept like half being awake while reading and stuff and my enjoyment of the book. So I have read it. I am going to reread it this later on this month, though, so I don't want to review it quite just yet. Because in all honesty, I think I remember maybe half of it, and the rest is just, like, in, like, a NyQuil haze. So, read it, but not going to review it in this video either. So that being said, the books that I did read and am going to review, I'm going to start with A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. This is the first book in the Veronica Speedwell. It's supposed to be five book series, I believe. Books one, two, and three are out, and book four comes out, I believe, in March. So this follows our main character, Veronica Speedwell, who is a lepidopt lepidopt <laughs> lepidoptress in the Victorian time period. And... Oh, I can't say that. I can't say what I was going to say because that's spoiled. Her, it starts off with her adoptive uh, aunts, parents, whatever guardians want to call her, passing away. And she all of a sudden gets like swept up into this, oh my God, people are after you situation. And then she meets Stoker, who's kind of like helping guard protect her from some people who are after her. And her and Stoker have this like nonstop banter and so much sexual tension. And like she is so blunt and sarcastic and their dialogue is amazing. And they have to like, it, it reminds me a little bit of like Bones and Brett, um, Bones and uh, Booth from Bones, the banter, and like he's very standoffish and cast out of society. He's got a lot of his own problems going on, and Veronica's the only person that he thinks is like treated him the way that she would treat every other person. And they get along in that way, but they also banter and argue an awful lot, and it's amazing. And like if you enjoy like vocal women this is a good series for you. If you enjoy any sort of banter, this is a good one for you. The dialogue is amazing. The sarcasm, the humor comes off in this book and it's just like so freaking good. So this was technically a reread for me. I read this every year or so I think from now on around Christmas because that's what I did last year too. So five out of five stars. I would, you know, I don't even know what I would do to get an arc of a dangerous collaboration, but I just have to wait a couple more months for it. Then I did a reread of The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. This is a, I, I think it's called A Christmas Carol. I couldn't remember it the other week when I was filming a video. The one was Scrooge. I think that's A Christmas Carol, right? <laughs> Anyways, it's kind of a retelling. It's more of a contemporary retelling. But our main character is kind of stuck up, spoiled, rotten girl. Her mom has passed away. Her stepmother has recently passed away. And her dad's this movie director. He's kind of absent, mostly because he's going through the deaths of all these people. But he's really trying. And she's in that puberty age where she doesn't want to be seen with her dad and all that stuff. And she's kind of just a garbage person. And then things happen and she ends up getting recruited into the Scrooge organization. So once a year, this organization finds a Scrooge character and goes through the whole Scrooge process of finding ghosts, present, past, and future, and trying to change that person for the better. And she, because she, no, I can't say that either, because that'll spoil it. 
she ends up in the organization. That's all I can really say about it. But she does go through a lot, a lot of growth. Now, I am not someone who enjoys contemporaries, but this was actually adorable. There is a little bit of like magical realism element. I think the reason I still end up enjoying it, despite it being a contemporary, is it's kind of like the Netflix holiday version film retelling of The Scrooge, which I mean, if you know me, I'm trash for a Christmas Prince. It deserves an Oscar. It's a horrible and it deserves an Oscar. This one is like, it's good and it deserves an Oscar situation. I also love Cynthia Hand's writing, like after reading My Lady Jane, totally obsessed with all three of those authors. I also really like like the ending kind of twist that there is, like I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't totally sure where the story itself was going when we got to the end. I went, oh, that's cute. And then, oh, oh, okay, that's kind of a cool twist. I hadn't seen that coming sort of style. So I would really highly recommend this one. It's a really good Christmassy time of read. And I I mean, it's going to be another one, I think, that I kind of just read every December or so, just because of the plot. But it's just a really enjoyable, fun, light read. And it looks a little bit, like, thickish. Not really, but, like, it's almost 400 pages. But Every time I've read it, I read it in like less than a day. So I would really highly recommend it. Five out of five stars. And then I picked up the second book in the Veronica Speedwell series because I couldn't wait any longer. I waited one whole book between that and A Curious Beginning. That's a lot for me. But Perilous Undertaking is the second book in the Veronica Speedwell series. And it picks up exactly where the first book led off. But the first book led off with this like big cliffhanger. So I have to make sure that I don't spoil it. But... Our lepidopterist friend Veronica Speedwell is back with her friend Stoker. Essentially this book follows kind of like they've gotten like this almost like unofficial sleuth agency when their connections are having issues. They've contacted these two because they're both insanely smart and kind of outcast society and they seem to get things done. And it follows them on this kind of mystery of trying to find out who committed a murder because currently there is an art patron that is being accused of this murder and they know he didn't do it. And they want to find out who did it and make sure that he can get off, as well as all of the issues that still carried on from the first book. So, once again, dialogue and banter. It, it, it hit me in the feels. It was so good. The comedy and the humor. I mean, like, Veronica is basically just what I imagine myself would be in that time period. I have a very big mouth. And... I just her like feminist viewpoints and the way she just bluntly says things and just like startles like it's like that her words literally hit them and they're like what and they fall over and her and Stoker keep mm, dancing around this very visible sexual tension and I just it, it honestly blows my mind how Deanna Rayborn got like trans comedy and like sexual tension can be really difficult I, and it's not sexual tension of like and they lingered at each other in a room like it's built on like the relationships and their actions not the author saying oh and there's sexual tension in the room as well as like the comedy the sarcasm that can come off it, it, it can a lot of times not come off like her this book and katie henry's heretics anonymous is one of the very few books that i i i, I when i was reading it i could I, I was reading the dialogue and i could hear that they were kind of quickly yammering, dialoguing back and forth, which I feel like is lost in a lot of books. So once again, five out of five stars. Then I picked up The Gods of Gotham by Lindsay Fay. This is me trying to catch up on all the Lindsay Fay books before her book comes out in, I think, February 2019 that I really want to read. It's called like the Paragon Hotel or the Pentagon Hotel something like that. But she has this amazing ability with mysteries and historical fictions. Historical fiction aspect of it is really what I love. And last month I tried Dusk and Shadow and didn't love it. And so I was very concerned that maybe Jane Steele was just an anomaly and I just liked that one only. But I've since read Gods of Gotham. Oh, that's not a sentence. I have since read Gods of Gotham and pleasantly surprised, I ended up giving it, I think, a four out of five stars. So it follows our main character in 1845-ish in New York City. There's all of this chaos going on between politics and the police force, like the police force being established, but it's directly connected to the Democratic Party. And there's a lot of like political stuff going on. But oh my God, the amount of betrayal and lying in this book, like especially the last third or so when everything starts coming out, like, oh my good Lord, these people are going to have trust issues going forward. But it follows our main character who, he used to be a bartender, I believe, and then that building burnt down. So he has, took the job that his brother is works for the police. So he took a job with, his brother got him the job with the police force. And all of a sudden on one of his runs, you know, patrolling at night, he runs into this girl soaked head to toe in blood. 
and doesn't know exactly what to do with her. So he takes her to his apartment to like let her sleep. She's like this young girl doesn't know what the heck's going on. Don't know exactly what would happen if he brought her to the police station. And so he lets her stay at his house and things unravel when she shows him a mass grave site of 19 children. There's kind of a mixture of obviously trying to solve that murder, police corruption to the max, family drama, romantic drama. And there's a lot of actual inclusion of like the role of women and status, as well as the role of religion playing into the role of women. And it's just very, very, very interesting, the amount of stuff that managed to be crammed in here, but it all seemed to fit. It was just, I think, a lot of issues that we all kind of know about, but a lot of the time an author, when writing historical fictions and mysteries, will focus on just one thing. You know, if it's the murder of women, then maybe they'll bring up the role of women in society. But there's a lot of different characters. So there's the police characters, there's religion, there's some of... um, some of the characters belong to um, the uh, Catholic Church, or yeah, Catholic Church. Then there is this influx of Irish refugees coming in, which is causing a lot of xen- of xenophobia and and oh, just and then there is the whole role of sexism and prostitution and the role that religion plays and society and politics in keeping things as they are. And then you have all of this on top of that, the murders. <laughs> so. I want I don't want to say anything that will give it away, but I really enjoyed the main character. He is very flawed. However, I think he is like legitimately a good person and just like a horrible situation. And he really does try his best to protect this little girl as much as he possibly can while solving the murder and making sure that she does not become a victim of, you know, whatever caused this mass grave of children. And I really, really, really enjoyed this. And I'm very excited to read the other Lindsay Faye book that I have. And lastly, for this week's video, I read A Dangerous Collab- not A Dangerous Collaboration, sorry. A Treacherous Curse by Deanna Rayborn. This is the third book in the Veronica- third book? What is wrong with me? The third book in the Veronica Speedwell series. The last one is currently out. And I am such trash for this series. But this one actually kind of made me think of, like, it's it's got the Veronica Speedwell, like, the Bones and the Brennan kind of characters. But then it's kind of, like, taken them and put them in, like, a Indiana Jones Relic Hunter sort of situation if you understand me but that follows our main character Bram Stoker not Bram Stoker 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 and Veronica Speedwell again doing their kind of amateur sleuthish situation when all of a sudden it comes out that the woman no sorry make sure I get this right Stoker's ex-wife left him and married his best friend and they haven't they had a falling out obviously <laughs> that sort of situation causes that they had a falling out but we find out he's gone missing and they have to help find him because everyone is automatically going to assume it's Stoker because they had that big falling out and very publicly and Stoker has a past. So we find out more about Stoker's past. We find out exactly about his wife because she has left an imprint over the last two books on him, but we've never met her. We don't know exactly what happened. We just know that she sued for divorce and that is all, all she wrote. And so we meet her. Veronica goes like full kind of like attack on her sort of situation like not physically attacking verbally attacking that's how veronica speedwell does things but like almost like a protective girlfriend but they're not dating and like that's why i freaking love that like i think she's finally like realizing like oh no i'm in trouble because she has this thing veronica where you know she hooks up with dudes which is a big no-no in this time period in general but she hooks up with dude but never englishmen from her own country and never in her own country so I have a feeling she's going to break that rule soon. If she doesn't, by the end of the series, I'm going to absolutely, like, destroy something. Like, I'm... uh, (sighs) Anyways, so there is this mystery. The big, really, really cool thing, I think, that pulls me into, like, the Relic Hunter or Indiana Jones sort of situation is that all of this mystery is based around a trip to and from Egypt by several royal, royal, rich people doing digs in, like, the Valley of the Kings and finding all these gold treasures and as the English do, stealing it and bringing it back to England. I mean that in the nicest way, but that's just history 101. Y'all did that an awful lot. And, and yeah, and one super expensive piece goes missing. And it's kind of a trying to find out exactly who took that, as well as there's someone pretending to be Anubis and scaring people in this book. It's very interesting. I I, th- I think this is my favorite of the books, part of it being Veronica and Stoker keep getting that closer and like, oh, Oh my god, I think I might actually have feelings for this word. And then you have the Egypt, and then the British being all colonial, and then all, like, the relics on top of that. It's just really, really cool. So, once again, five out of five stars. Once again, would offer up my unexisting firstborn for an arc of a dangerous collaboration. 
So those are all the books that I read this week. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these and what you thought or let me know what you've read this week and what you thought of those books. I would love to hear. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of the books to their Goodreads pages and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.